Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Joseph Cotton and Richard Wong in Treason. Before we begin our play, here's a word about DuPont's durable repellent finish, Zelan, spelled Z-E-L-A-N. When you buy rainwear, jackets, children's wear, work clothes, or sports wear, look for the Zeland tag. Zeland sheds water and resists stains like all good water repellent finishes. But here's how DuPont Zeland is different. Its protection doesn't come out in washing or cleaning. Tonight we bring you a story about a traitor, Benedict Arnold, who broke faith with his own generation and so with the future. And about a young officer in the American Revolutionary Army, Major Matthew Clarkson, who had to choose between blind loyalty to his commanding officer and loyalty to his country. Adapted from Robert Gessner's historical novel, Treason, tonight's cavalcade stars Joseph Cotton as Major Matthew Clarkson and Richard Worf as Major General Benedict Arnold. I have come a great distance over many years to say this to you. And in my own time, I was neither great nor especially brave. But I had first-hand knowledge of one thing, treason. We are betrayed by what is false within, not by men alone. It's true there are certain men branded as traitors, and I know some of their names. They begin with Judas Iscariot, who plotted for 30 pieces of silver. The roll call following his name is long and impressive. But remembering their names doesn't seem to be enough. For in your time, Norway was betrayed by a man named Quisling. France was eaten away by Laval and Patan. And in Czechoslovakia, there's Heinlein. Yes, write their names down and remember them. But remember this, too. Treason may begin like a small seed with one man's ambition, but it will only grow in earth that is ready for it. Treason is one man and the blindness of people around him, I know. For my name is Major Matthew Clarkson, and for a time I served under a major general in the American Continental Army. His name is Benedict Arnold. I was assigned to General Arnold's staff early in the fall of 1777 and was ordered to report to him near a place called Saratoga. I found the general sitting alone in his tent and gave him my credentials. As I walked into his tent, he said, Well, Major Clarkson, I see that you were in the Battle of Long Island. Yes, General Arnold. I was wounded there. And what do you say for yourself? Say, sir? Well, it's not the best recommendation. You ran like sheep, I hear. We... We were green troops, General Arnold. Green troops, yellow officers, I'd say. But General Washington Except himself... Excepting the commander-in-chief, of course. You'll see better fighting here if you can stand the pace. We hope to engage gentleman Johnny Burgoyne soon. What will you think of that? I... I hope to be of service. Nicely sir. stated, Clarkson. Ah, Major Franks, it's about time. The scout reports Burgoyne is ready to attack. Good. Now we'll trim his fancy curls and his German mercenaries. What a fine day for a fight. Uh, there's also this dispatch from General Gates. Gates! Oh, now to see what the devil... Oh, by the way, Major Franks, this is Major Clarkson. He's my junior aide. Welcome to Saratoga, Major Clarkson. Thank you, Major Franks. I knew it. Gates is a fool. He's a yellow fool. What are his orders, sir? Orders? You think I'd take his orders? Sir, I know it's not for me to say, but Gates has influence in Congress. Yes, that's why he sends these orders. He's afraid. Afraid someone else will win the war. Well, what do you say, Clarkson? It's not for me to say, sir. I, I just got here. Oh, come on, be a man. Speak up. But uh, I don't know what orders... Will... That's the point. The point is, should I obey the orders of General Gates? Well, since he is your commanding officer, I... I who win battles take orders from that man the militia calls the old fishwife. You obeyed stupid generals at Long Island, Clarkson. What did it get you? A defeat. No, Clarkson, a good general makes his own rules. We're going, sir. He's attacking. Listen to that. It's a sound I like. And General Gates' orders, sir. His orders are that the left flank is not to engage the enemy. I won at Ticonderoga. I waded through the wilderness to attack Quebec... And he wants me not to engage the enemy. General Gates commands this army, sir. Clarkson, if you're on my staff, I think we should understand some things. Yes, General Arnold. No matter who commands this army, I command you. 
And I want no timid men around me, do you hear? We need victories to win this war. That's obvious, sir. Obvious? It's not very clear to General Gates. If it isn't clear to you, take your blasted orders and go back with them. Well, what do you say? I... I'll stay, sir. Good. Major Franks, tell my orderly to bring my horse. Right away, General. It's going to be a first-class fight, Clarkson. I'm glad to hear it, sir. Tell me, Clarkson. I've seen many young officers in this war. Most of them are weak. They quibble over everything. But you came around very quickly to my point of view. Why's that? Well, sir, we were defeated on Long Island. Badly beaten. And it makes a man sick at heart, sir, that kind of defeat. Yes, Major? So I made up my mind, sir, that if I could find a strong man, a real leader, why... I'd follow him to hell and back. Clarkson, you think you could drink this? Give you strength. Thank you. What's wrong with me, Major Franks? I've been unconscious. Just a neck wound. You lost a lot of blood. And the the general? Right here, Clarkson. They got me in the leg. We'll convalesce together. Oh, I didn't see you, General. I'm sorry about the legs. Well, it's true. If it weren't for this, we'd have chased them into the Atlantic. Uh, It was a first-class fight, sir. Just what you said. The uh, General told me you did well, too. I didn't see you. He did nobly. Brought credit to himself. Carried my dispatch right between the lines. Tell me, sir, your your leg, it's not serious. No, no, no. No, if I can keep those doctors from amputating. But even then, to be wounded in a victory is easy. I could even wish it had been my heart. No, sir. Well, I'd have my glory then and no more stupidity to contend with. And uh, General Gates, sir? Uh, What has he done about the orders? He's conveniently forgotten them so that he takes some credit for trimming Johnny Burgoyne. Oh, I knew there was no risk. There are even rewards for disobedience. They're going to reward you? Yes, I'm appointed military governor of Philadelphia. Well, well, speak up. Do you like that? Oh, Philadelphia, sir. There's not much action there. I hear it's mostly dancing and Tory ladies... Doesn't seem right for you, sir. (laughs) There'll be plenty of action, Major. Tory ladies, yes, and Tory men. A pretty kettle of intrigue, Philadelphia. How does it sound to you, Major Clarkson? Well, sir, I told you I'd follow you to hell and back, and I guess that includes Philadelphia. Sally Cornell, I I never thought we'd meet again in Philadelphia. Neither did I, Major Clarkson. But, Miss Sally, you were a rebel girl. You don't belong here. And you were a rebel man, yet you were here. Yes, but I'm with an army and a rebel general, so I can't be corrupted. Shall we dance, Miss Sally? If you wish, Major Matt. Yes, you're here with an army. But the British don't fight the swords in Philadelphia. No? What are the weapons? Well, look at your general now. He's already lost his first engagement. Oh, you mean the redhead? What's dangerous about her? She's Peggy Shippen, and the British call her the Red Siren. I think General Arnold should be warned. He's talking to her now on the other side. Upon my soul, Miss Peggy, Cliveden's a lovely house. Tell me, what are those bullet marks? In the Battle of Germantown, General. The British held this house. I hear they still do. In a way, General. But you don't seem to mind. No, no, I don't mind. I mean, sitting here in this chair, which looks very like a throne, you seem pretty much a royalist yourself. It's to please you and your royalist friends, Miss Peggy. I know you prefer a throne, no matter who's on it. And would Mr. Washington care for your jokes? The king, Miss Peggy, may call him Mr. We call him General Washington. Very well, General Washington. After all, what can I do? You've conquered Philadelphia, and we are all... Sally, uh, come on out on the terrace with me. All right. We'll go through here. Do you see what I mean, Matthew? She hasn't left him for a minute. <laughs> Sally. Miss Sally, my general won't lose his head, and besides, I brought you out here to kiss you. Oh, please, Matt, I'm serious. You don't know how bad it is here. Did you notice that tall, dark man who spoke to the general and Peggy a few minutes ago? Oh, look, there have been dozens of people around him all but evening. But this I... man is a Tory merchant. He trades with the British. If General Arnold isn't weak for redheads, he may be for money. And this man can offer him a great deal of money. Miss Sally, believe me. General Arnold is the strongest man in the Continental Army. He won't be interested in money. Besides, how do you know about this Tory merchant? I know about him because he's my father. (laughs) 
Come in. Oh, Major Clarkson, come in. I don't like to disturb you, sir. No, it's all right, Matthew. I thought I ought to consult with you about the summons. I'm ordered to appear at the State House tomorrow to, to testify. Testify before those yapping politicians about what? Well, I suppose, sir, it's about the court martial they threaten for you. Oh, yes. And this worries you? You can count on me, sir. They won't get any information from me. And what information could they get? That I've made sacrifices, that I've spilt my blood and my money while the members haggle over my back pay? Sir, you know I don't question your loyalty. No man could who's fought with you. And out with it. What worries you? Well, sir, it's, it's all these months in Philadelphia. It's, uh, it's a bad place, sir. There's gossip and constant intrigue. And is gossip something that you fear? Uh, no, sir, but it... It might make it easier, sir, if you were cautious. I never thought I'd hear you urging caution, Matthew. In little ways, General Arnold. Like, uh, well, like not seeing so much of Miss Peggy Shippen, sir. Her reputation... That's it... enough, Matthew. I get enough meddling from these fools without you. Oh, no offense, sir. And I think that you should know that I am going to marry Miss Peggy. The Supreme Executive Council of the State of Pennsylvania is now in session. Mr. Joseph Reed presiding. The clerk will now read the charges submitted against Major General Benedict Arnold. The indictment against Major General Benedict Arnold is... It is charged... First, General Arnold issued clearance papers to the ship Charming Nancy... ...suspected of trading with the British in New York. Such clearance being issued without the knowledge of the authority of the state. Second, General Arnold used public wagon for the transport of private property. The first witness before this body will be Major Clarkson, aide to General Arnold. Major, will you be seated? Oh, thank you, Mr. Reed. You understand this is not a court, but merely an investigating committee. You will not be required to take the oath. I understand that, sir. But still, uh, we expect your cooperation. We are investigating profiteering and will make uh, certain recommendations on our findings to the uh, commander-in-chief. I'll oblige you all I can, Mr. Reed. Splendid. That's the proper attitude. Uh, Mr. Reed. Uh, yes, Mr. Matlock. May I uh, put the first question? You're right ahead, Mr. Matlock. Thank you. Now, Major, what can you tell us of General Arnold's dealings with Mr. Cornell, the merchant? You mean Mr. Cornell, who owns the charming Nancy? That's right. I'm afraid I can tell you nothing, sir. Nothing? <laughs> That's ridiculous, Major Clarkson. You signed clearance for the charming Nancy. Did you do it on orders from General Arnold? I can't tell you that, sir. Major Clarkson, I don't think you understand the issue here. The issue is whether you are serving General Arnold... Or your country. If you insist on shielding General Shield Arnold... Shield him? From what? Surely you know that the people of Philadelphia are sick of his extravagances. It takes a barrel of money to buy a barrel of flour. Yet Arnold lives like a king. You'll pardon me, Mr. Matlock, but I know only one thing. And what's that, Major? I know that when I serve my general, I serve my country very well. I know that his record in battle is my country's greatest glory, and I know that in return he has received only slander and ingratitude. And, uh... Is that all you have to say? Yes, that's all, sir. If you're finished with me, I you'll... know. You'd better wait outside until we're through. You can take a message from us to General Arnold. A message? Yes, Major. We're going to show General Benedict Arnold the Congress is running Philadelphia. <laughs> You are listening to Treason, starring Joseph Cotton and Richard Worf on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Among the DuPont better things are Duco and Dulux, which in peacetime will again beautify and protect America's automobiles, trucks, and refrigerators. As our DuPont cavalcade continues, General Arnold, played by Richard Worf, Major Matthew Clarkson, aide de camp to General Arnold, played by Joseph Cotton, has returned to Cliveden, Arnold's home, and is talking to his fiancée, Sally Cornell. It's all over? Yes, Miss Sally. It's the general here. He'll be here. What happened? I have a message for him from the executive council, General Washington. General Washington? Then he had... I can't tell you, not, not until I speak to General Arnold. Matthew, no, no matter what happened, darling... Don't be depressed. Oh, how can I help it? After all, the executive council does represent the people... And one man isn't so important. One man? How can you talk like that? Have you forgotten Saratoga? Of course I haven't. But anyone could have changed. He could have changed. Miss Sally, you misjudge him. Everyone does. It seems no one knows the meaning of loyalty except myself. And Miss Peggy, thank the Lord, he has Miss Peggy. Yes. 
And he still has his charm. Please, Sally. Oh, I can't help it, Matt. I can't help feeling angry. When you came to Philadelphia, you were sure Peggy would have no effect on him. You knew she was bad, a Tory, but you had faith in him. Now, when he's done what you said he wouldn't, you still have faith in him. It's not that. After all, Miss Peggy does no harm. Except that she corresponds with enemy officers. Oh, you mean Major Andre. (laughs) What harm does that do? Silly letters about the latest styles in New York. I... Oh, you're all mixed up, Sally. Oh, I wish I could make you see. Well, Matt, I see the vultures turned you loose in one piece. Is Peggy here? She's in the library, General Arnold. So, Matt, give me your news. I'm afraid it's bad news, sir. Bad news? Well, they couldn't prove... They proved nothing except the charge of using the public wagons. Well, that's not a capital offense. No, sir. So what's your bad news? It, uh, it's going to hurt, sir. You see, the committee recommends that General Washington publicly reprimand you. But Washington never in this world... He will, sir. You'll receive his reprimand in the morning. Oh. Well, it's come to this. You say Peggy's in the library? She's expecting you. I'll see her now. Remain here, Matthew. Peggy, I want to see you. Oh, it startled me, Benedict. I'm sorry. Came in so quietly. Come here, you look ill. Ill? Yes. I am ill. Sit down here, dear. Shall I get you something? No, no, no. Thank you. What is the matter with you? Oh, I know. It's the executive council. Yes. Well, tell me what happened. Washington. General Washington will publicly reprimand me. And is that so frightful? It's more than I can stand, Peggy. Washington. Yes, I still believed in Washington. I'm glad it's happened. No, Peggy. Why, the only thing holding you back from realizing your your destiny was this infatuation for Washington. Now, you know he's like all the others. No, Peggy, he can't be. He's jealous, Benedict. Jealous because you're the greatest general since Marlborough. Only a king can appreciate you as you deserve. A king? Now, you will go ahead. Write to General Clinton in New York. You can send the letter by Mr. Cornell to Major Andre. No, 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 I can't risk it. Easy. When Washington reprimands you, take it graciously with a smile. You can afford to. And after we're married, ask him to appoint you to West Point. He never will. And your king will pay you handsomely for West Point. I suppose there's no dishonor in changing sides. It's been done before. And you'll be the leader of your country... Not Mr. Washington. Yes, the leader of my country. And I? I'll be a duchess. Benedict. Benedict, do be quiet. You're so nervous. What? Oh, I'm sorry, Peggy. Who'll be at dinner? Major Clarkson arrived this afternoon. Matthew's here? He and Sally have been touring the fort. Oh, I don't like him snooping around. He's an idealistic boy. He might wonder at how the place has become so run down. Matthew adores you. He'd never suspect. Well, it doesn't really matter. The British will attack within a few days, but it's bad waiting. Oh, yes, but afterwards. Oh, my dear, it would be wonderful. General Clinton should have the plans of the fort by morning. Andre's on his way with them now by way of the Tarrytown Road. Washington. You may catch him in your net, too. That would be a victory. A strange sort of victory. No fighting. Clinton will attack. Oh, but the attack will only be a formality. We'll be outnumbered four to one. <clears throat> the first battle in history where the same general commands both sides. <laughs> that is military history. Oh, it's dinner time, Peg, and I'm hungry. Well, come along. Sally and Matthew are probably waiting. I hope there's something worth eating. Sometimes, General, I think you forget this war. Um, Matthew, Peggy said you'd arrived. Welcome to West Point. Thank you, sir. Well, we'll try to make you feel at home. Uh, that won't be difficult, sir. After all, Miss Sally's here. Well, listen to him. And we spent the afternoon quarreling. Quarreling? What do you find here to quarrel about? Oh, the usual thing. Miss Sally's intuition. She worries about spies. Spies? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Sally's lived too long in Philadelphia. Well, shall we sit down? Yes, let's. There's not much to eat. Only common soldier's fare. Salt fish. I despise it. Peggy, where's the butter? There isn't any. We'll manage without butter, General Arnold. I know. Where's the oil I bought in Philadelphia? Here it is, dear. Yes. Try this on your fish mats. Fine oil. I paid $80 for it. $80? Well, my friend Smith says that's 80 cents in continental money. Smith is a Tory, sir. What? Oh, yes, yes, I suppose he is. Miss Sally wrote he'd visited here. Well, what of that? The devil might visit here. Perhaps, sir. But you shouldn't be seen in the company of a man like Smith. He's dangerous, sir. After all, you've already had trouble. Are you threatening me, Major Clarkson? Benedict, please. I'm not threatening you, sir. But I think you should know that Smith is a spy. That's ridiculous. For whom? How do you know this, Matthew? I asked. I inquired of people I knew in Albany. You inquired? You had the nerve? I did it to protect you, sir. You went over my head to make inquiries in Albany? And I thought I could trust you. 
But you're like the rest, sneaking, prying. Benedict, be careful. Major Clarkson, I order you... You're to pack your things and leave West Point by tomorrow night. I thought I could help you pack, Matthew. I'm almost finished. Miss Sally, just sit there and talk to me. I suppose you think I was a fool. Oh, no, Matt. I was proud that you stood up to him. Maybe now you'll believe me. Believe the general's a traitor just because he lost his temper? Nonsense, Miss Sally. But I told you this afternoon I have proof. Here, read this. A letter addressed to General Clinton in New York. From whom? Read it. Sir, I may soon be in a position to command the defenses of West Point and am respectfully inquiring what price... Miss Sally, where did you get this? From my father. It's a copy. And? He took the original to New York. You think it's from Arnold? I'm sure of it. Matt, I wasn't sure when I first read it. Only afraid. But what else explains conditions here at West Point? A hundred men could take this fort. No. No, Miss Sally, I, I'm sure there's an ex explanation. Oh, Matt, you're a blind, silly boy. But if you're going to hear his explanation, you'd better hurry. Why, Miss Sally? Just before I came here, the general got a dispatch, and it upset him. He asked that his horse be saddled. He's going somewhere. <laughs> General Arnold, may I speak to you, sir? I'm in a devil of a hurry, boy. It'll only take a minute. Well, what is it? I don't want a prize, sir, but where are you going? Well, you know that Washington is inspecting the area. Miss Sally told me you got a dispatch. Well, this is a military fort, Major Clarkson. I, I thought there might be some connection, that the dispatch was why you are leaving. Matthew, what are you driving at? I don't quite know, sir. All I know is that this time I must be sure. Sure of what? I must know what, what's in that dispatch. Matthew, you're upset. We had a regrettable quarrel. Believe me, I'm sorry. I'm it. sorry, too, sir. Then we'll forget it. And you can forget about the dispatch. The dispatch is incriminating. It won't incriminate you, Matthew. That's not what I asked, General Arnold. Well, then, why not tell you? It is incriminating, from a rebel point of view. Was it about West Point, sir? I'm leaving, Matthew. My messenger to General Clinton was stopped, and he carried the plans for the fort. It was Major Andre. Then Miss Sally was right. Now, don't stand there, boy, like a sick puppy. If you're afraid for yourself, I'll take you with me. After all, you've served me well. Yes, I've served you well. You've been like a son to me. You have youth idealism. I've needed that. You call it idealism? Oh, come now, Matt. It's an easy choice, and I won't forget your loyalty. Yes, I have had loyalty. But whom will you be loyal to, Benedict Arnold? Well, are you coming with me? No, no, General Arnold. I'm staying. General Washington. Major Matthew Clarkson reporting. I've heard of you, Major. And now you command West Point. You joke with me, sir. No, I knew Arnold would run when he heard we'd stopped Andre. And I knew we'd find you there. I'm submitting myself for arrest, sir. Arrest, Major? For treason, sir. That's a big word, Major Clarkson. And an evil one. But we have no reason to believe... No, I'm guilty, sir. I'm guilty because I believed in Arnold... Even when I should have known. That's treason, sir. I followed him blindly. Blindly. That was treason against yourself, Major Clarkson. I can't arrest you for that. Against myself, sir? And I parole you to yourself. Major Clarkson, we who love the people must live and learn. And the hardest lesson is this. That men come to our cause for many reasons. And leave it for many reasons. Because some men love only themselves. But there is one thing that is constant. Yes, I know, sir. Our cause is constant. Thank you, Joseph Cotton and Richard Wharf. Mr. Cotton will return in just a few moments. And now here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont with news about beefsteak and chemistry. You'd like to be able to go to your butcher and buy a tender, juicy steak whenever you felt like it. We all would. We Americans have found that we need more meat, not just for the armed forces in wartime, but for the whole country in peacetime. A chemical made by the DuPont Company, disodium phosphate, added at least four million pounds of beef on the hoof to our national supply last year. 
There is every indication that it will add more than that in the future, as cattle raisers learn more about it. The need for this supplementary feed is a strange one. You might call it a deficiency disease of pastures. The soil in some sections of the United States is lacking in phosphorus. There can also be a phosphorus shortage when the feed supply is restricted because of a drought, say, or from overgrazing, or because the type of feed used just doesn't contain enough of the mineral. And a diet without enough phosphorus has serious consequences. Beef cattle get into what cattlemen call a creepy condition. They lose weight, and their value is tremendously lowered. Cows often become barren, and those cows that do have calves can't maintain themselves and the calf. Many cattle die. Investigations made by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the Texas Agricultural Experiment Stations, and the King Ranch show that the bad effects of a lack of phosphorus can be corrected by adding disodium phosphate, a DuPont product, to cattle feed or drinking water. Cattle getting phosphorus in this manner and otherwise well-fed stay fat and sleek. Breeding cows often produce a third more calves. Calves which are healthier, hardier, and often as much as 65 pounds heavier when they're weaned. Today, science stands on the very edge of discoveries of the greatest significance for human health and happiness. Recent discoveries in the prevention and cure of disease through chemotherapy are already being applied, as well in the field of animal husbandry. This latest contribution, adding millions of pounds of beef to our national food supply through the supplementary feeding of disodium phosphate to beef cattle, is a typical achievement of chemical science and a typical illustration of accomplishment on the part of one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. Now here is Joseph Cotton, co-star of tonight's Cavalcade. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I suppose the world is full of Matthew Clarksons who've been misled by their blind admiration for big and little Führers. But I'm inclined to believe that this generation of G.I. Joes is by comparison pretty hard-headed and clear-thinking. Next week, Cavalcade's audience will hear another exciting story, My Fighting Congregation. It's the thrilling and true story of Chaplain William C. Taggart. And one of your favorite actors, Brian Donlevy, will be starred in it as Captain Taggart. So I'll be listening with the rest of you. Thank you and good night. Cavalcade is happy to remind its audience that Joseph Cotton will soon be seen as one of the stars in David O. Selznick's newest picture, Since You Went Away. Richard Wharf appeared through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical, Bathing Beauty. Cavalcade's music was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. This is James Bannon sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, and inviting you to listen next Monday evening to My Fighting Congregation. Starring Brian Dunleavy with Wally Mayer. In weeks to follow, Cavalcade will present other favorite actors with stars such as Richard Conte, Kevin O'Shea, Walter Pidgeon, and many others. Monday evening is good listening over NBC. For your further listening pleasure, may we suggest that you stay tuned for the Firestone program, the Bell Telephone Hour, and Information Please, which are to follow over most of these stations. The Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. National Broadcasting Company.